Okay. Hello, oh, and welcome to the Arlington Weekly oh, News. Greg, oh. greetings. 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 This is that. That's it. We're on. We oh. are on. <laughs> welcome to the Arlington Weekly News. I'm Greg Nolan. Thanks <laughs> for joining us. Buenas noches, Mr. Nolan. Soy Daniel Pineda. My name's Adele Quo. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't missed a cue in about 30 years. So <laughs> got behind on that one. Sorry, folks. Thanks for joining us. This is our uh, our post Valentine's Day show for uh, February 2016. Holy cow! Going fast, huh? Flying by here. Ooh, short it? month. Yep. Leap year. Although there's 29 days. That's so right. Extra day. Short month. One more day. How you doing, everybody? You doing okay? We're good. We're Trying great. not to cough. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have the usual lineup for you tonight. News and CBB, and Adele is here with... It's Easy Bean Green. 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 She didn't cough there. Uh, yes, our CBB file. <laughs> Don't jinx me. Amit Brambat and another installment of Yogathon, our news for seniors, and then Miriam, Miriam and her guests. That's our show. But before we go, a social media reminder for my partner. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely correct. Right. You can watch the Arlington Weekly News on our <laughs> YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News and the number one, and also Facebook.com slash Arlington Weekly News. Correct. All right. That was our rather fractured intro. Here we go. <laughs> the first of our news items. Well, uh, federal taxes for 2015 are due Monday, April 18th, 2016 of this year. Since April 15th falls on a holiday in the District of Columbia, Emancipation Day, the regular uh, deadline has been extended uh, three days to the 18th. The regular deadline to file a Virginia state income tax return is May 1st. Uh, if you're used to collecting your tax forms at the library, heads up on that. Uh, they're no longer available for pickup at Arlington Public Libraries. Uh, thanks to budget cuts in a 2015 appropriations bill, there are fewer pre-printed tax forms available to you. You should instead visit the IRS's website, irs.gov, to download documents and forms that you may need or give them a call. The IRS has a number, 1-800-829-3676, and uh, you can request your forms and they'll send them to you. AARP will continue to provide free, free tax assistance until April 14th. You can visit the library's the website uh, for more details. And for Arlington County tax information, you can visit taxes.arlingtonva.us. <coughs> Daniel. Well, Craig, if you're an Arlington property owner, you might not be so excited. That's because the tax season, Arlington tax bills may be increasing. According to the county's 2016 property assessment <coughs> released in January, 20, uh, January 15th, the average assessed value of all existing residential real estate increased. The total amount grew by 2.1% or 2.8% when new construction is included. That brings new value, including new developments from $587,100 in calendar year of 2015 to over $600,000 in 2016. This means that the existing real estate tax rate homeowners may pay at least six thousand dollars in real estate taxes the definition of an average arlington resident or single family property owner covers condominiums townhouses and detached homes craig hi daniel also in our news items well um february is national black history month and despite being part of the landscape in america since its early days african-american stories and contributions have historically been left out of American history lessons. Uh, you can commemorate the spirit of Black History Month right here by learning about or contributing to Arlington's proud heritage concerning African American history. The Knock Green Valley area, uh, down around Four Mile Run, uh, Walter Reed Drive, and Army Navy Country Club, uh, the area has been a focal point of self-sustaining self black entrepreneurs, property owners, educators, and professionals. This, remarkable, this is remarkable, rather, given that the area flourished at times when public institutions openly, actively, and systematically disenfranchised, marginalized, or even enslaved and imprisoned African Americans. Uh, if you have any stories uh, or images that you'd like to contribute or you can or you'd like to educate yourself about the area's history you can visit knock.omica 
library.net or the library's website, library.arlingtonva.us, for more on local <coughs> black history. <coughs> Daniel. And Craig, if you have learned about the civil rights movement, then you may have heard about children who pioneered desegregation. <coughs> the Ruby Bridges and the Little Rock Nine may be some of the names you've heard. Arlington also had courageous children who broke the color barrier. On February the 2nd of 1959, 41,000 Vacation Lane was no picnic for four black seventh graders attending Stratford Junior High School for the first time. The school's grounds are now home to H.B. Woodlawn <coughs> Secondary School. On February the 2nd of 2016, the four students returned to their old school facility for a commemoration event. Highlights included the 2001 documentary, It's Just Me, the Integration of the Arlington Public Schools, which was developed by the Arlington Educational Television, that's AETV staff, and a discussion with the four brave former pupils, <coughs> Michael Jones, Gloria Thompson, Lance Newman, <coughs> and Ronald Deskins. Craig. And also in our news items, well, county residents have voted on decals, window decals for their vehicles uh, since 2003. Uh, en entries were opened, uh, recently opened to local high school students. This winter, the winner for the 20, I'm sorry, for the 12th annual decal design competition has been announced. The Arlington County Treasurer opened the latest competition last November and in January, the winner was announced, Wakefield High School sophomore, Ryan Kovich. Ryan's design features a photo of the Arlington Cinnamon Draft House sign down on Columbia Pike. In addition to his uh, design, which will be showing up on over 160,000 vehicles here in Arlington, he will also get $750 in cash. Not bad, way to go, congratulations, Ryan. Daniel, oh, we, it's, is it time for EBG? <laughs> yes, it is. It's, time it's that EBG. time. I almost forgot. Here's Adele Quo with It's, it's easy, easy Being Green. green. Sounds Adele. like I need to uh, go away and come yeah, back yeah, and right, be missed. A, yeah. <laughs> It's, time. We'll <laughs> it's easy <laughs> being green when you are stormwater wise with conservation landscaping. It's that time of year for my favorite lottery. If you're an Arlington property owner interested in reducing stormwater runoff from your property and help to keep pollutants out of our streams, applications for the residential and HOA Stormwater Wise Landscapes 2016 programs will be accepted between February 14th and April 1st, 2016. Check the website on your screen for details, www.arlingtonva.us slash stormwaterwise. If you're selected through the program's lottery system, four practices are eligible for the reimbursement program to receive advice from county staff and funds to support your project. Conversion of lawn or non-native invasive plants in your yard to conservation landscapes is one of the four practices supported by the program to reduce impervious surfaces on your property. Many people don't realize that when it rains, our large expanse of exotic lawn is little better than asphalt or concrete in allowing the rainwater to soak into the ground. Conservation Landscaping uses our mid-Atlantic native plants that are better adapted to our local soils and microclimates, takes advantage of the natural settings of our site, and recreates the layers of plant communities found in our local natural landscapes. So stop planting common invasive plants like burning bush and Japanese barberry. As natural wilderness shrinks and suburban impervious acreage increases, what we plant in our gardens is increasingly important. Discover the pleasure in recreating features in your garden that occur in nature, like a sunny wildflower meadow or a shady winding woodland path. Besides staying true to what nature intended for a place, designing your garden with conservation landscaping helps to preserve our rich natural heritage and create a sense of place. Native plants not only make us feel at home, they remind us of this special geographic region that we like to call home. So remember, it's easy being green with conservation landscaping. Conservation landscaping.
landscaping. So some things other than asphalt and concrete. Native plants are the way to go. Get rid of all the concrete and that like exotic it. lawn. And there's Joe right there. Joe's, Joe's still, still with Joe's us. Joe's got his tree tonight. He's actually He's got chilling. a tree there. Like chilling it. out Hitting by out. the native like evergreen. Beautiful. Things are very relaxed. All right. Thanks, Adele. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate it. Okay, as promised now, moving right along on this edition of the Arlington Weekly News, our CBB, or Community Bulletin Board, file. Ah, uh, well, Opera Nova will uh, perform Scott Joplin's Trimonisha this fall. Uh, but they need your help, support Opera Nova, and uh, get to know the company better at a brunch and a fun fundraiser that's coming up February 28, 1 in the afternoon. Opera singers will perform entertainment, uh, provide entertainment, and you can meet artistic director Jose Sachin. Is that right? I hope that's right. At the event at Fort Myer Oak Club. Tickets are $100, $50 of which is tax deductible. <laughs> Call 703-536-7557 for more information and uh, check out the, the Fort Myer Oak Club's website. They'll have more information there for you. Daniel. Well, Craig, after two crippling uh, snowstorms this winter, some residents uh, may have something to say of the county about their experience. Uh, the county invited the public to discuss issues and uh, suggest improvements at a snow forum from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Wednesday, February the 24th. <coughs> The event will be at the Francis Scott Key Elementary School. That's actually located at 2300K Boulevard. That's in Arlington. Uh, to register, visit departments.arlingtonva.us slash events slash snow dash four. Craig. And also, uh, whether or not you attend the snow form, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, you can also visit the county website to share your thoughts on... Uh, this issue about snowmageddon and other things, you can visit the, the website at www.surveymonkey.com, uh, I guess, to fill out the form online. And we'll be back with our News for Seniors file right after another installment of Yogathon with Amit. Here's Amit. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Arlington Yogathon. This is Amit, and today we are going to talk about Simhasana. The asana resembles a seated lion, hence the name is simha, which means lion in Sanskrit. The practitioner's face expressions are modified to resemble a lion. So this is how this asana is done. You inhale and raise the arms up. While exhaling, we'll be sticking the tongue out and looking up, saying ha. So inhale, raising the arms up. Ha. We could also add a laughter next to it, so it will be like <laughs> So there are a lot of benefits of practicing this asana on a regular basis. It relieves your facial and neck muscle tension, it stimulates neck and throat muscles which in turn reduces wrinkles on the neck. It's also been claimed to help with uh, voice-related difficulties such as stammering or throat-related problems such as hoarseness or tonsillitis. It may also aid in better functioning of uh, carotid sinus, the sinus nerves, the larynx and uh, the thyroid and parathyroid glands. The carotid bodies assist in maintaining normal blood pressure and heartbeats. The breathing pattern uh, helps relaxing chest and abdomen. I hope you liked today's Arlington Yogathon. See you next time. Namaste. Oh, right. amazing! Had some crazy now. action there. Now you know how they call it seated lion. My eyes that would, was that pose. would they ever come back if I, think I did my, that? I don't know. <laughs> wow. I think my tongue would go back, but I'm not so sure about my eyes. Holy cow. Well, that's, that that's looks like a good one. That's that dedication. Story. Thanks, Amit. Uh, we'll have uh, more, another installment of um, Yogathon next time. Thanks, Amit. Okay, as promised now, our News for Seniors file, News for Seniors glasses are still stuck on my nose here. Here we go. Uh, well, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, wrote an open letter published throughout the country on April 16, 1963, defending the strategy of nonviolence, resistance, 
to racism. Join senior adult specialist Nancy Connors in a reading of the letter and a discussion afterwards of uh, the meaning of the letter. You can attend that on Friday, February 19 at 11 in the morning till noon at Walter Reed Senior Center. For more information uh, and to register, give them a call, 703-228-0955. Daniel. Well, Craig, here's something new and different. If you like coffee, you can learn from the experts. Sean Douglas, who's the co-founder of Commonwealth Joe Coffee Roasters, and his staff about the flavor profiles that are unique to different origins of coffee beans, as well as the best methods for brewing and preparing specialty coffees. There will be several different varieties of specialty coffee, as well as hot pour overs on the spot for participants. That's on Sunday, February the 21st from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. That's at Arlington Mill Senior Center. Give them a call at 703-228-7369 for more information. Mr. Nolan. All right, gracias, Senor Pineda. Well, are you interested in knowing something about your ancestors? Well, you're not alone. Time Magazine calls genealogy the second most popular hobby in the country today. You can meet once a month with other ancestry enthusiasts uh, to trace your roots and learn about the people that uh, make up your family tree. It requires some detective work and some basic research, but it's a pursuit that can take you to some unexpected places and with some surprising results. That's coming up Tuesday, February 23rd at Lee Senior Center from 11.30 till 1.30. Beginners are welcome. For more information, give them a call. Number should be on your screen there, 703-228-0555. Give them a call uh, and they'll tell you all about it. Daniel. Well, Mr. Nolan, if you're a reader, then you should pay attention to this. You can join in a book swap being held at Culpeper Garden Senior Center. Bring a book. Get a book for free. It's a great way to add to your reading repertoire or find a title from a favorite author. Feel free to bring several books to share. That's on Tuesday, February the 23rd from 1 to 2 p.m. at Culpeper Garden Senior Center. Craig, just give them a call at 703-228-4403 if you need any more information. Mm -hmm. So if you're a book lover, that's the place to go. Thank you, Daniel. Also in our News for Seniors file, well, the changes in the car industry are coming about uh, very quickly these days. If you're interested in knowing about uh, cars of the future, like the Google car that claims to drive itself, you can join rather Lee Jackson, <laughs> take to Lee Jackson, who is a professional automotive journalist who test drives and provides reviews on all car manufacturers. He does that every year. He has written thousands of technical and how-to articles and is the co-host of Cruise Control, which is a nationally syndicated radio program devoted to all aspects of the automotive world. Uh, you can join him for his discussion on Wednesday, February 24, at 1 in the afternoon from 1 to 2 at Langston Brown Senior Center. Give them a call for more information, 703-228-6300. number should be on your screen there. Uh, and we'll be back uh, with a quick bye-bye. Bye-bye right after we hear from our styrofoam mom, Miriam Gennari. Here's Miriam. Welcome to another edition of the Sustainable Scoop. Of all the things that we need as human beings, one we cannot do without is water. Here to discuss a revolutionizing um, water treatment program is Dr. Lockett Wood, and he is the founder and CEO of A Vivid Water Technologies. Welcome, Lockett. Thank you, Mary. Now, um, I, I hate to go straight to the headlines, mm -hmm. but you can't get away. Um, from what's happening in Michigan right now with their polluted water um, and and the fact that people cannot drink from their taps. How could a process like what you've created help them? Well, the problem, of course, is that they are, their lead pipes in their feeder systems are what are causing the problem. So consequently, we would need to have a distribution system. For example, we could go to schools or places where people gather and provide them with clean water there as opposed to having used bottled water. You realize, of course, that lead pipes are a problem all over the U.S. and the East. Well, the, you know, the problem with polluted water is a huge, enormous problem, whether it's an environmental issue that is a consequence of someone's failure to, you know, protect their communities, or like you said, 
old pipes. So you recently did a interview in Colorado on Now Channel 7, and I want to take a minute and look at that interview because um, it, it's, it's pretty telling. Okay. Let's watch. Lockett Wood, CEO of a vivid water technology in Longmont, says after nearly a decade of development, he's discovered a safe way to purify water using a process known as electrocoagulation. Much water purification is done with toxic chemicals like chlorine and ferric chloride, but this is a electro chemical technology. He starts by pouring dirty water into this reactor. We place pure metal ions in the water those are highly reactive. They then combine with all the contaminants of the water. So we wind up with a clean water on the top and a very dirty sludge on the bottom. The reaction takes just a few minutes and then watch as the water separates from the sludge. This is an extremely effective way for removing arsenic, heavy metals, biologics, petrochemicals, Pharmaceuticals. Lockett says it's so effective, it's now good enough to drink. Wow, that's amazing. I, I mean, literally amazing. I wish I had a glass to drink right now. Well, <laughs> if, if you'll come to Colorado, we'll give you a glass of that water. Well, I, I don't necessarily have to because you've got these machines built. We're talking real machinery. This is not a concept. This is a, a process that you can do on a larger scale. So tell me about the larger process and how it works. The larger process, in fact, larger or smaller process, what we do is we put pure metal ions directly into the water. This is a replacement for toxic chemical treatment. And those ions interact with every pollutant in the water, creates a very strong precipitate that will either settle out of this water or we can filter it out. And as a result, we wind up with extremely clean water, no bugs, no heavy metals, no arsenic, no lead, no zinc, no copper, no mercury. Remarkable. You even mentioned when we spoke before that some of the heavy metals could be salvaged in post-laundering of the water. That's absolutely correct. In fact, I've found that there are four mines around the world where each year you could pull more than $20 million worth of metals directly out of the water so we could mine water. So not only can you drastically improve situations like what's happening in Michigan, but generally speaking, water supplies where someone has either dumped something inadvertently or human beings or um, maybe uh, wildlife or um, the, the system of agriculture is polluting the water. Uh, how much water can you process? Well you can process as much water as you have, uh, but typically... What's the rate? Uh, the rates are from the little unit that you saw there, there's one gallon a minute, and we can readily go to a thousand gallons a minute. Wow. So that, and those cover most of the industrial wastewaters. The EPA has identified 62 different industrial wastewaters that really need to be treated, and this process is ideal for nearly every one of those Wastewaters. Well, it seemed to me that because we're creating these sustainable communities, and, and, and part of that is density, that it makes sense in a community like D.C., Maryland, and Virginia to have their own uh, system on the ready. Is that something you're looking into? <clears throat> this is particularly valuable for emergency uh, water purification. For example, we can build the, you, you saw the solar powered unit. We can build that in a four by four by four foot pallet that you can store. Shelf life is probably 20 years or longer for that. So you can keep that in reserve. You have an emergency like Katrina, and now you've got fresh water on site for the people that need it. This provides enough water certainly for drinking purposes and food preparation. So you set up a laundry system, basically. Basically, that's correct. You set up a multiple of these around the community. So now. What is really important for you at this point? Um, you've got the hardware. Um, you're sharing the information with different communities. But what do you need to do now to kind of scale up? Well, in order to scale up, this kind of technology is relative capital intensive. So we've got to do two things. We've got to generate capital to build these systems. And then, of course, we have to find customers to buy the systems. Those are our major objectives at the moment. The technology is solid. 
We, we have no concerns about the technology. We do have concerns about getting this in the field. And there's no question that an investor would know, and with some confidence, you have patents on this technology, do you not? That's correct. We got our first patent in 2013. We just received our second patent uh, last fall, 2015. So our patents are, are quite solid and relatively new. So you are eager to meet people who are interested in learning more about the process, and you're happy to go and speak, I would imagine. I will speak any place, anytime someone will invite me. Wonderful. In fact, I'm, I'm giving a paper at the WET conference in Indianapolis uh, the last week in February. All right, well, wonderful. You're in the right town right now. <laughs> D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Pay attention. Um, I want everyone to go to the Avivid website and learn a little bit more about this fantastic technology and then certainly follow up with Lockett Wood about how you can either support or request a similar system in your community. I'm Miriam Gennari. That's the Sustainable Scoop. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, you. Lockett. Thank All you, right. Miriam. Thanks, Miriam. Great job Dr. as Lockett, always, right? Lockett Wood, water is a precious resource. Absolutely. Take care of it. Okay, well, that's about a wrap. Do, anything else to add before we go? Yes, a great what event that's actually happening on uh, from March the 1st to the 25th, right, of 2016. Yeah, we'll actually, the opening here. reception and Meet the Artists is on oh. Friday, March the 4th, our own uh, Todd Meet Parker and Sandy Parker, Urban Edge. Mm-hmm. Acrylic abstracts. I guess yeah. Gonna do this. Looks really cool. <laughs> so it seems here. like that's a great event. Yeah, there's a reception on Friday. There's a reception Friday. afterwards. Yeah, yeah. The reception on March the 4th of the this reception year is the from fourth. 6 to 8 p.m. So please go and visit. The 4th of them. March. Yeah. Coming up. At the Gallery Underground in Crystal City. 2100 Crystal Drive, <laughs> Arlington, Virginia, 22202. Did you get enough chocolate? Are you chocolate? -a 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 -a? Yeah. I actually did not did get any chocolate. You didn't? No. But I, you bought something well, a little cool. Bit of chocolate, isn't but, it? but I think the gift that I gave <laughs> is pretty awesome. Which is? It was a drone. Ooh. A drone? Yeah, oh. a very cool drone. You gave your significant other a I drone? I did, I did. Because <laughs> it, it looked registered? like registered? This one is not because it's um, under the. It's cheap. You don't have to be <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did not get a fancy one. That's true. Yeah, I got a budget them. drone, but has that camera? <laughs> it has a camera yeah. with a video and storage, a panoramic storage system. But if it crashes, yeah. there's no warranty on that. There is right? no uh -oh. warranty. So have you tried it yet? Uh, I have not. He won't let me he play won't with let it. You. <laughs> Make sure you're in a big open space. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, you know, no wires, but they no trees. But they look and, like fun. They look amazing. Hey, it's better than if flowers and back, chocolate. <laughs> I know. I said, can I try it out? Can I try it out? If it comes back, then you know it's uh, <laughs> it's working. So we'll see. I guess. Maybe by the okay, there's the wrap. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Heff. We gotta go. So uh, thanks to all of you for watching. Uh, next week, give us a give us a look. If you're there, we'll be here and we'll try it all again. Have a safe week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.